Hello, Polygoners! I am Shaft, you are watching a daily cast, and we've got two really awesome players for you in this replay, and it's going to be a pretty epic match. Um, there's really valuable lessons to learn in this, starting it a little later than usual, just so we can hop right into those lessons. Here on the bottom right hand side of Ascension to Ire, it's Sloth Gaming's Game Time. And on the top left hand side, in the blue Terran trunks, he is Juggernaut Jason. Now Jason is going for the Reaper build with a low ground expansion. This is a fairly common build, but still this can be a little greedy against early pulls, which Game Time is not known for doing and is definitely not doing. We are going to see a 2-1-1. So this is opening very, very standard. We've got the link speed out of game time, and as is standard for Sauron Zergs, which game time is king of, he has pulled out of gas. We'll see when he chooses to take that. Very early third going down here, and uh, he's going to go ahead and repel this Reaper. Um, he went ahead and got six links. This does allow him to get the slightly quicker third uh, up a little bit. A um, little less drone count, though, than... A contemporary Zerg. Little poke in here at the top. He is going to see that this is a 2 1 1 build. He sees the tech lab going down here. So he should be knowing this should be about a four and a half to five minute drop. It'll leave here about four and a half, five minutes. Should arrive about five to five and a half. And just a little poking around. Stem pack starting, that's definitely a big part of the 2-1-1. Now this defers from something more like a Hellion opener, where the Terran would be striving to go for um, Hellions at this point and retake map control. As you see the Lings taking it, as soon as Ling speed hits, they're going to bypass this uh, Zelnaga Tower, neither of these really too important, as he does know it's 2-1-1, he knows the timing on that. He is going to get use these links to go ahead and get in here and pressure the SCVs. Of course, Marines are going to try and uh, cut them off, but what this does is keep Jason pinned into this base. This is a really wide natural, and this is a pretty effective contain with, what, six links? Uh, that you know he had made originally just for defense so he's just moved them to the other side of the map this allows him to completely use uh, Queens as defense he's got two um, workers back on this he put those back about the same time he had put metabolic boost finished and this just allows him to get the highest amount of workers possible and he's been poking in and out of here I'm sure I think he's lost a ling somewhere along the way but yeah this is mostly just gonna keep this third from being taken or really even thought about until the uh, the attack moves out and these links can threaten some kind of counterattack mm, somewhere around now It'll, he'll he'll see the 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 medevacs moving out so let's see see how he's got this yep boom perfect he sees that he'll have a good response and then of course the counterattack um, Jason's already in a position to defend that two engineering bays and this will get cleaned up. Actually, no, he's going to go ahead and pull out. Some lings are in production, but really, he was uh, expecting that counterattack to delay, and he's he's lacking the uh, the punch that he's going to want to deal with two full medevacs. This is a huge amount of DPS coming from Jason. Jason being very careful to target down this one weakened queen. Did get a little distracted by the lings there, but... Oh, yeah, and there's the transfuses, and trying to target one queen at a time is not doing the best job at that, but all of these queens, but one half fallen, there's another queen falling there. More Ling's going to be flooding in, and only two queens are actually on the field right now. Three more in production, Carapace on the way, 48 drones to 38 SCVs. Game time's going to have to be really careful, and only attack when he had the overwhelming odds. It looks like... Jason, not really wanting to cut it too close, going to go ahead and retreat and reposition. Uh, these queens could easily snipe this one medevac, but another medevac full of marines. Going to be swinging in here to reinforce, and this means some more pressure on this creep spread. And actually, we've got a widow mine here. This is going to be a game changer, as there is nothing but lings on the field. No roach warren has completed yet. There is a surround here on the marines. Not all the marines getting picked up there. And it looks like the lings going to come in here, cleaning up some more of the marines. Jason going to 
be losing a lot of the Marines. You don't want to do that in this kind of position, but he was trying to get a good Widow Mine shot off. Not the best usage of the Widow Mines, but game time is really good at avoiding these. With just Micro alone, we'll see if he can continue to do that, or if one lapse in concentration will allow Jason to go ahead and plow through and kill off this third. Really, that's the goal. Kill this creep spread, which he is limiting, and kill the third. Looks like, yep, two more medevacs going to be swinging in here. Almost an entire medevac's worth of units. The defender's advantage going to be in game time's favor, and he does have bane links here, but there is a marauder, and... Ooh, that would have mind being careful not to go off. Does go off on the links. Bane links still survive, not taking out those gas units. And Ling's going to be flooding in very, very shortly, but we've got to be careful. Oh, the kiting is powerful in Jason, and it looks like game time's units are going to be going back to the creep. Very, very careful. Ooh, losing, uh, losing a couple of the banelings. And there was a transfuse, another baneling going down and trying to bait it into the widow mine. Ooh, parked right on top of that widow mine. It only takes two or three banelings to kill one widow mine, but choosing not to go ahead and explode those manually. I don't know if he didn't know that they were there. Looks like a queen, another queen may fall. Nope, actually the queen going to be uh, getting into safety, but the lings are falling again to that widow mine, just narrowly avoiding the the banelings there and we've got a huge rally of both scvs and marines going to be swinging in here a little ooh, trying to take this third base so this is the problem with containing a terran as a zerg player because once you contain a uh, zerg or a terran player they are going to break that contain eventually once they break that contain then it's balls to the wall offense on you and they're going to take that third and they're going to be in a very powerful position you have to be ready to catch that and it looks like game time just not quite ready to catch it but still not out of this just yet some banelings making a really good connect on these marines and the spore crawler forcing the um, medevacs on back but a little bit out of range of the liberators trying to take out the liberator with the spore crawler but the marines there to defend it and takes that out very very quickly There's some great rally lines here by jason and game time trying to defend this location does manage to get a good angle here but the liberator still doing a good job with their drop zones and Oh, the drone's going to be forced into retreating this third base. Maybe forfeit, but the Banelings rolling, rolling, getting some good connects on the Terran army. But there goes that third base. Finally, it was well worked for. But Game Time has already snagged another base on this side of the map that he can manor to. And looks like Game Time is going to be sending... Uh, a counterattack squad into this third base location, nothing there to defend. So these SCVs will be pretty much blistered, and they are brought into uh, to the fight. This is going to force Jason to come back onto the map, and these SCVs, ooh, trying to grab this choke point, and they do grab the choke point, but a lot of the SCVs are being decimated in this position. A very close worker count, and some of these links getting into the natural. And looks like reinforcement marines gonna pull the lings. Ooh, these SCVs getting mighty close to a stray widow mine. This widow mine basically gonna be preventing any kind of third base retaking a majigger. And there is a second widow mine there as well. Liberators leading this and doing some decent AoE damage to the Mutalists, but both of those Liberators going to fall. Decent splitting here by game time. Going to try and get a wide angle on these Widow Mines, but the Widow Mines are being procced here by a couple of the Mutalists. And those Mutas taking a lot of damage, but the Banelings are there and going to be able to deal with most of the Marines on the ground. The Mutalists may be slightly more forfeit than the Lings and the Banelings. So game time perhaps going to be uh, favoring the Ling and Baneling composition as opposed to a onslaught of mutalists but the mutalists are still doing so much work and actually going to be able to pick off a lot of these medevacs here and here we go it looks like we may see a huge banelink connect on these scvs but he is waiting for the perfect moment and hey that was good enough marine's going to be coming in here to chase out some of the zerg stuff but maybe overextending just slightly and there it is gg jason recognizing the fact that his worker count was getting pretty pretty decimated but honestly 
It has more to do with the, the, the fact that this is pretty much the only army he's got. There's just not that much, and... I don't know. I've seen Terran come back from positions like this, but Game Time's a very good player, so maybe Jason just acknowledging that and uh, wanting to move on to the next game. Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out what the, the major breaking point was for Jason. It was... He was in such a good position for a long time, so where did where did it go wrong for him? Well, I think it was this moment here. Because he has to come all the way back from here, where he wanted to just go kill this base. He goes all the way back here, all the way back. And I mean, Terran's just not that good when they're moving. They're really good at entrenching, and this isn't the, you know, the most entrenchable army. Like, this is one of the more mobile styles, but even then. Yeah, because Jason's got, like, a bigger worker lead all before this. But it's just time. All of this is time to get the mutas out. To get some banelings out. And why does Jason have 1300 gas? Like, why doesn't he have the plus one infantry? He's had these two engineering bays forever. Did he just forget to make it? Huh. I mean, these libs go a little early. Huh. Now, I, so basically, even with the libs going early, like, even if he hadn't have done that and had like a perfect position, he just really shouldn't have moved out in this. He didn't have enough stuff. He could have either gone for the kill here when game time was rushing in here and like doing all of that and just like delayed when he was coming back, let reinforcements on the high ground, like pull all the workers up in here and let reinforcements kind of do their thing and do like the base race thing. I think that would have been fine. Or... Now that he has gone back and defended, just stay back on this three base economy. Zerg's on a three base economy. Zerg needs at least one more base. You've got this. This is not a good base for Zerg. I, I just don't see why he attacked. Anyways, guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. If you like this kind of analysis cast, let me know in the comments below. I would love to start doing some entertainment stuff if you guys are interested. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep going with the full-blown analysis. If you like this type of content, hit like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and most importantly, visit us on Patreon. Link in the description. Until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.